Hello, my name is Jason Brill and I'm the Petrokutcher organiser for Norwich in England. And I'm going to briefly explain as to how I came to have that position. Throughout university I would spend summer holidays working in places such as Harlem in the Netherlands and Schmuel in Norway, visiting architecture as part of thesis research, such as the project here by Per Lein. This invoked a passion for me to study abroad and I spent time studying in Germany. Um, after completing my training as an architect, I began PhD research at the University of East Anglia under the supervision of two tutors, furthering my knowledge of the Bauhaus and the modern movement, specifically researching Maxville. And this is a picture of me sat in Maxville Towers. Later from that, I grew tired of being in England and travelled to Mongolia, um, where I began to look at other cultures and I was always intrigued by these children playing with the, the bent wire which was then used as a slide to slide down the, the snowscape of the mountains. From there I went on to Japan where I met Astrid Klein for the first time and I was hoping to get a job for Klein Dyson but Astrid introduced me to uh, Richard Rogers studio and that's where I began working in Japan. The interview with Klein Dyson was probably the most surreal event in my life. Astrid was so busy, she only met me at 11 o'clock that evening and the studio they had was being used as a nightclub and so it was quite a strange interview that I experienced. Through that meeting I became quite fascinated with Klein Dyson's architecture and um, I know this project here is actually no longer there and that's continued throughout this time and I've got to travel over more recently to the Pow Wow in 2018. After working at Roger's studio, I spent some time travelling around and I visited Tado Ando's practice um, and that gave me a chance to research his work and visit lots of his buildings. But I also became fascinated with Japanese architecture, both the traditional gardens um, in Kyoto, but also the modern sculptures and such as the creative works of the Shinjuku Ai in uh, Shinjuku Station. This fascination too is to experience the architecture both from visiting it outside but also experiencing to stay inside buildings such as the uh, capsule tower where I spent a little time as using that as a base whilst I travelled to other parts of Japan. After my time in Japan I travelled over to Seattle. I kept from England's perspective moving east to get to what many would consider to be the west. So initially in Japan, I worked in Seattle, working on the Stephen Holt Bellevue Art Museum throughout the construction phases and the pictures to the bottom there are the, the site and then the picture to the right is the finished, finished building with the, the concrete painted and aluminium cuts through the, through the block. Whilst in Seattle, I then worked for Malem Architects and this was a project at Evergreen State College that achieved the highest environmental rating for an academic building, yet it achieved, was achieved in the lowest 5% of the cost index. After this project um, helped me implement research I had done back in my time in Europe. Whilst in Seattle, our practice was partnered with a New York practice, which provided the opportunity to travel to New York. And I was in New York before and after the September 11th Towers. And curiously, I had a pack of six tickets to visit six things around New York, and one of them was the Twin Towers. Unfortunately, I never actually got to use that part of the ticket. After returning to the UK, I initially worked for Munk and Beck and Marshall, working on housing projects such as the award-winning Gainsborough Housing, but also uh, Art Gallery, again, as I had worked with Stephen Hull's project in Seattle, uh, the Grand Rapids Art Museum in Michigan. After my time at Munk and Beck and Marshall, I worked specifically on the Boston Museum of Fine Art, which was a, a large expansion of that building, including the main atrium spaces and the staircases. Finishing at uh, Foster's, I returned back to, to Norwich and, and re-invoked my interest in, in Max Bill. Um, and particularly around that time, there was lots of exhibitions of Max Bill across Europe celebrating 100 years since he was born. And I took the time to, to visit um, Max Bill's house and, and helped on publications by both Angela and Jakob in their respect, re, respective research for two projects. In 2004, I established uh, Italiaville Architects returning to Norwich a year later, developing zero carbon modernist housing. 
and with good fortune one of my projects was featured on a Channel 4 programme by Alan de Bottom called The Perfect Home. As well as visiting and staying um, in the living architecture projects developed by Alan de Botter and later being able to bring architects from MBRDV uh, who had designed the balancing barn to Norwich uh, to talk as Petra Kuchin and I. Um, and I think this is one of the things I'm quite proud of in Norwich that I've much managed to get some quite high class architects to come and present at our various presentations. And whilst uh, relating back to nature with my work, um, Max Bill's pavilion sculpture in Hakone is always something which is quite important to me and seeing the nature in stark contrast to the harsh lines of the granite. And then later also visiting seeing how architecture can create spaces for children to play, such as this Peter Pierce curved sculpture, um, which is a, a, a place which would be wonderful for a child to kind of explore. And having maintained the relationship with Klein Dyth and um, having first met Astrid back in 1999, I returned um, to then become a Petra Kutcher organiser for Norwich and have visited their studio um, in September of 20. 14, I believe this was, um, and then more recently in 2018 attending the powwow. Um, and this image also just uh, reflects and reminds me of it's a picture taken more recently, but I have the same picture of myself uh, taken beside the, the, the Globe Architecture building in Tokyo um, in 1999. And I would kind of consider to the, the ability to travel through these has provided me with a, a great asset of an architectural library. Um, for when I am now teaching students at university on a part-time basis. Um, I have the resource of the, the images I've built up over that time. So that's, I guess, my little circular route as to how I became involved in Petra Kucha from meeting Astrid in 1999. I'd like to thank you for your time, and this last image just shows all of the people that have presented at Petra Kucha in Norwich. <laughs>